So you decided to exchange this 20 pound note for this netbook slash laptop from a guy from the back of the van and the laptop wasn't even in English and you thought it's a good deal and you could change the language to something else. And I'm here to tell you, let's find out what I tell you after we roll the intro. Hey name tags and welcome this is Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel we do reviews, repair and tutorials of tech including sharing some entrepreneur tips. So at any point in time stop video, smash me a like and also consider subscribing so you can be notified of my future uploads but don't forget to also enable the bell icon and I have lots of tutorials coming up. Now back to today's video. So this is a netbook. It's a uh, probably eight year old netbook. It's the HP Mini 310 slash 3100 series, something like that. It doesn't really matter. So a client of mine bought this for really cheap, about 20 pounds and thought he could just change the language, which was in different language to some to English and then give it to someone. Unfortunately, it turns out this has Windows 7 Starter Edition. If you don't know what it is, it's a really crappy version of Windows 7. It just barely has some apps and you know Microsoft Office just on the go, uh, usually designed for netbooks of this caliber. Now, the bad news is you cannot change the language to English on a netbook with a Windows 7 Starter Edition. It's not gonna happen, we tried. Now you could potentially change it on a Windows Home Premium with a third party application. You could also probably change it on Windows Enterprise, maybe a professional edition, but not on a starter edition. Uh, as for Windows 10, I believe it can be done, okay? So let's go through this laptop. The first thing is it has an Intel Atom N455 CPU. This is a one core, two thread CPU at 1.66 gigahertz, I believe. Maximum uh, RAM compatibility is two gigabyte, maybe DDR2, maybe DDR3, who cares, huh? And uh, it has a 250 gigabyte hard disk drive. Now the problem is this laptop is not upgradable as far as I know, this netbook. Um, the RAM is at the maximum and the CPU probably not gonna be able to upgrade. These are not designed for upgradability in mind. So what can you do with a 20 pound netbook slash laptop? Number one, save your 20 pound. Don't buy this kind of stuff from the back of a van or from a guy, especially in a different language. Now options we have is to reinstall Windows 7 starter edition. There is the product key on there, but I could not find a proper ISO image for the installation. And even if I did, this installation is from the manufacturer, not from Microsoft themselves, which means you won't be able to activate the license. So that leaves us with Windows 7 Home Premium or a Windows 10. I would not advise either for two reasons. Number one, again, you're gonna need another license and that's gonna cost you. And number two, you won't be able to guarantee whether the drivers are going to work especially for windows 10 and you may end up with crashes also the ram of two gigabyte in 2018 even from before is nowhere near enough as even the minimum requirement for apps especially for even opening a browser and going onto youtube things are not going to play very well so don't buy it it's a bad idea um i would not pay even 10 pounds for this i probably would pay one pound just you know for the sake but i would not pay 10 pounds for this okay the other problem as well the laptop's battery is dead so you need to keep it plugged in okay so the only thing i can recommend is to put a linux distribution and uh, one of the lightweight ones which could be something like linux mint if i was doing this it would be puppy linux but I'm not doing it. And the reason I'm going to choose Linux Mint is because it's a very popular Linux distribution when you come from a Windows environment. It's very similar. There are other Linux distributions you could use, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, etc. But I would recommend Linux Mint. And also Linux Mint has a lot of pre-installed applications out of the box. It works really well. Now I've already done the installation. So this is going to be added in post edit. I may also upload the installation of Linux Mint onto this HP Mini 110-3100 check the description below for any link or also the card above first thing is that if you want to access the boot drive 
when you turn the laptop on you need to press F9 and it will change the boot order but if that doesn't work you need to go into setup by pressing F10 and going to the boot change uh, tab and then selecting you know uh, the right network um, slash uh, USB bootable drive and all that nonsense which you need to do to be able to access the USB live USB stick for installation also if you want to know how to download and install a Linux distribution on a live USB stick there is another video on my channel link below and in the card above and we are using Linux Mint I think it's 18 point something this processor is a 64 bit able processor so do choose that uh, although a 32 bit can also work the other thing as well there are plenty of other distributions if this one does not want to boot up because I've tried a few other ones and they did not want to boot up but this specific one did so we're gonna go with that out of the box again uh, we managed to install it and it's working but it's really slow and it's really laggy and it's running really really hot um, by default Google is not installed but that's really easily done go to Google's website and you can do it straight from Google download and install using the Debian package you don't need to do any command from the command prompt okay but what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you inside the laptop. I'm not going to even bother switching this off. We're just going to unplug it and because the battery is dead. Okay. Now, this is one of the easiest laptops to take off. And I'm going to use my top-down view because we're recording it. Why not? Now, take the battery off. Okay. I would advise you to press and hold the power button for at least 30 seconds to discharge any potential static electricity. And... Uh, after you're done, this laptop, if you remove the battery, you can see there's an orange tab here. And all we need to do is pull that to the left and the cover should kind of come off. This is one of the easiest laptop covers I've ever taken in my life. And keep that to the side. Now, uh, let me try and zoom this in or focus this a bit more using my top down view. By the way, if you want to see the setup for this, this is my last video which I've done. It's called Space Hacks, cheap recording home studio, something like this. Video link in the description below and cards above. Okay, now we've got that and I can show you. Um, on the left here, you've got the Wi-Fi card. Underneath this tab, this is the hard disk. And this is the fan for the CPU cooler. And under this thing, you've got probably just one stick of two gigabyte of RAM. So you can potentially change that but you're only going to be able to put another 2 gigabyte of RAM because you can't really upgrade this this is nonsense now the biggest problem is I believe to be this hard disk here you can upgrade this to an SSD which I would do if I had this laptop and I got it for free or paid for one pound for that the SSD could also also be reused in a different build later on so you will not really be wasting your money but I would not um, just update the OS and then leave as is because the, S the this hard disk right now is running really really slow and really hot and it's probably going to be one of the first things to go okay right and that's about it and like you see there's the product key here if you want to take it go ahead it's not going to be useful to you okay so what do you do with a 20 pound laptop well first of all this is an eight year old was released in 2010 don't buy this from the back of a van or from a guy especially if it's a different language you're gonna have problems save your 20 pounds put that in the budget of something else but if you really want to spend 20 pounds on the computer i would suggest to do this take your 20 pounds go to ebay and bid for a desktop which at least turns on because you're going to get a lot better value for your money and you're going to be able to upgrade a lot of the parts in there Right guys, um, to my client, I have installed Linux Mint 64-bit 18 point something version. It is working, but I've already disclaimed that I don't recommend it and it's really slow, it's really laggy, but it's working, okay? Uh, but it's really running really hard. Now, if you want to pay me more, I could do some thermal uh, installation, some, you know, um, dust cleaning and all that, but I would not recommend it. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, you know what to do down below. Leave me a comment, leave me a like. And also, if you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing so you can be notified of future videos. Enable the bell icon for me. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Heal My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.